we have now two very interesting um, keynotes, um, which are which are going to I think uh, put on the table two different points on the on these two topics, and I'm very happy about it. Um, so the first one uh, is uh, will be Pablo de Soto, and the second one will be after a short break Fike Janssen. So I. I proceed introducing to you uh, Pablo de Soto. Uh, he is an architect, a scholar, and educator with an iconoclastic experience across geography uh, and disciplinary borders. He is the editor of three books, uh, Fada Yat, Freedom of M Movement and Freedom of Knowledge, Situation Room, des Designing a Prototype of a Citizen Situation Room, and After Video Assemblages. Uh, in the 2000s, he was co-founder of Hactic Hackitectura.net, a group of architects, computer specialists, and activists. Pablo is currently guest lecturer at Umea University School of Architecture. Um, so uh, I will hand it over. He is, the title of his lecture is uh, From the Sputnik to the Stack, Radical Cartography in the Age of Planetary Scale Computation. Um, uh, very briefly, his abstract, uh, From the Sov Soviet Sputnik to Breton's Proposition of the stack, networked infrastructures have become a global architecture of computer mediation, which produces a distributed and largely uncontested new expression of power. If radical cartography is the practice of map making that subverts conventional notions in order to actively promote social change, the lecture explores an update on, on the term in the current age of planetary scale computational infrastructures, algorithmic, algorithmic governance and, and surveillance capitalism. Um, so, well, Pablo? I always need to start with some kind of video and atmospheric sound to calm myself, uh, to break the ice, and also to try to tune uh, common frequency with, with the audience. So good evening. Uh, I would like to thank Ushi, Davide, Martina, Anna, uh, and the rest of the Ambro crew uh, for having me here tonight. Uh, I'm thrilled and honored to, to open a community festival so plenty of exciting lectures, workshops, and performances. And I hope my lecture uh, will work as a kind of introduction, as a warming up to some of the uh, necessary discussions that will, that will run for the next three days and a half. And my lecture has two parts. Uh, the first part, uh, from the Sputnik to the Stack, uh, will offer a very, br a very brief history of network infrastructures from the dawn of the space age to our present day. Uh, it's an attempt to set up a geopolitical and technological context for the discussion, a kind of poetic departing point from the glorious Sputniks, uh, Sputnik and the, loser of the, of the, and the loser of the Cold War to ending the Silicon Valley dominance and Benjamin Bratton proposition of the stack, which is a kind of short uh, word with phonetic impact about the idea that our Network world is an accidental mega, mega structure that is both a computational infrastructure and a new governing architecture. And in the second part, uh, I'm, I will give a, a, a historic overview of counter hegemonic art of map making and radical cartography in the last 15 years. Uh, and my aim is to, uh, to start a conversation about the need, uh, if there is a need, to update a definition of radical cartography uh, in our current age of algorithmic governance, surveillance capitalism, planetary scale computation, uh, whatever you prefer to name it. So our travel today uh, through network infrastructures starts with these astonishing objects, 
and technical marble, 83 pounds aluminum sphere called Spugnik. It was a 58 centimeters diameter polished metal sphere with four external antennas, um, radio antennas to broadcast radio pulses. Uh, it's, Sputnik is a Russian war for a traveling companion. And 60 years ago, a Soviet intercontinental ballistic missile at Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan launched it to the space. It was the first artificial satellite, first human-made object to orbit the Earth. A Sputnik radio signals were broadcast by television and radio systems around the world, uh, immediately captured the public imagination. The Sputnik traveled about 20,000 kilometers per hour, taking 96 minutes to complete each orbit. It transmitted all radio signals, which were monitored by radio operators through, through, throughout the world. That was the sound at the beginning. And the signal continued for 21 days until the transmitter's batteries ran out. A Sputnik finally burned up while re-entering Earth's atmosphere after three months, 1,400 complete orbits of the Earth, and a distance travel of about 70 million kilometers. News of the world's first human-made satellite bars onto the front page and stay here for, there for a week. Uh, in the announcement of their feet, the Soviets said that the world could now see how the new so socialist society turns even the most daring of mankind dreams into a reality. And apart for, for, uh, from a, a few big hints by Russian scientists uh, that the launch was in the works, there was no advance warning for, of Sputnik. Um, in the midst of the Cold War, it's well known how this technological achievement is stunned and frightened the other atomic empire on Earth. So in response to the Sputnik, uh, President of United States Eisenhower established ARPA, the Advanced Research Projects Agency. ARPA is, is well known to, by people in this room, laid the foundation of, of an astonish, astonishing number of today's technologies, such as the internet. Uh, scientists like, like uh, this guy called Lee Glider, who published the landmark paper, Man Computer Symb Symbiosis, uh, anticipated by many years the development of information technology. That guy was at the top of the agency. And one of the objectives of ARPA uh, was to invent and build a communication network between computers. And October uh, 79, uh, 69, just 12 years after the Sputnik uh, orbit Earth, the world's first electronic computer network, the ARPANET, was established be between nodes at laboratories and universities, research centers, mainly in California and the West Coast of the United States. Um, Interface message protocols at four nodes serve as the back backbone of this first network. And the first message sent uh, between them was going to be logging, but the computer crashed after the first two letters. Um, then the network grew to expand all across the territory. This is a map of ARPANET uh, in uh, 79 with nodes already in Europe. The internet became so vast that it almost cannot be represented. Uh, this is a partial map of the internet done in 2005. The colors were based on, on IP uh, with different registers, no? <laughs> .com, .net, national domains, and so on. Uh, in 2012, uh, an anonym created a, a giant uh, network map, map of infected devices uh, with, uh, called Karna Botnet, which included uh, almost half a, half a million of devices that have reliable password at that time. And nowadays we are entering uh, in a state in, of being in which computation and data communication are, are embedded uh, and distributed through uh, our entire environment. With the Internet of Things, like uh, 50 billion objects uh, will have an IP address. As it is as Adam Greenfield writes in his book, uh, Radical Technologies, the colonization of everyday life by information technologies. And of course, a full constellation of new concepts and words and word emerge to give name to this uh, transforming new reality. Uh, Castell's coin, a space of flows as a high level cultural abstraction of space and time, and, the, and then the, the dynamic interaction with digital age. Um, as always, the feminist thought has been fundamental uh, to give us clues in this male dominant world of ideas. Uh, the cyber manifest by, by science studies. A scholar Don Haraway is a major, major contribution um, that today remains absolutely contemporary. 
and just quoting her, the main trouble with cybers, of course, is that they are illegitimate, the illegitimate offspring of militarism, a patriarchal capitalism, not to mention a state socialism. Also, William uh, J. Mitchell coined the concept of spatially uh, standard cyborgs. Um, um, mm, of course, Richard, Richard Stallman, uh, who made a crucial contribution, uh, developing the idea of, of what does it mean freedom uh, in code and the conceptualization of general public licenses for, for software. No? Even a group of architects uh, we coined the word architectura to make a kind of practice that, that could not emerge uh, before uh, information technologies. No? Um, uh, so, so two years ago, uh, the publication of the stack uh, on, software, on software and sovereignty by, by, by MIT Press has been a, a remarkable, also controversial uh, contribution in this theoretical uh, discussion about the network infrastructure and the technological reality we, we live in. Uh, in the book, um, Bratton um, proposed that different genres of computation, cloud platform, mobile applications, smart cities, the internet of things, can be seen not as so many species involving on, on their own, but, but as forming a projective geometry and a coherent whole, an accidental megastructure that is both a computational, a computational apparatus as a, and, a, and a new governing architecture, a new architecture of the world. The stack, says Bratton, takes different forms at uh, different scales, from energy and mineral sourcing and subterranean cloud infrastructure to urban software, a ma massive universal addressing system, system from interfaces drawn by the augmentation of the hand and eye to user identi identified by itself, quantification and lay sensor algorithm rob robots and so on. Um, interweaving the continental, urban, and perceptual scales, uh, the stack envelops the planet over land, underwater, and in orbit. So the stack re re uh, in, for Bratton refers to a transform transformation in the technical infrastructure of global systems, uh, where planetary scale computation has fundamentally transformed the logics of political geography in its own image, and, it, and it's producing new geographies and new territories that can enforce enfor themselves. Um, Bratton, Bratton's fundamental claim is that the stack is replacing other forms of governance and sovereignty with great political consequences. Uh, it wants to be a new theory for the age of global computation and, and algorithmic governance. So uh, unlike modern political geography, and Bratton is making a dialogue with, with Carl Smith, the nomos of the earth, uh, unlike political geography, which divided um, up horizontal maps, a stack geography also vertically layers the spaces on top of one another. Um, in an account that is both theoretical and technical, Br Bratton explores uh, six layers of the stack, earth, cloud, city, address, interface, and user. And these layers cohere into an emergent order that is largely the result of unintended, unplanned, unpredicted, and managed technical and societal interactions at different scales and as different stories. We, absorb, we, ob, we observe this bottom up uh, from the earth layer to the user layers. Earth entails the material and energy harnessing geological demands of computing. Cloud names the weird sovereignty of corp corporatized global technologies service such as Google. City addresses the life experience of cloud comp computerized daily life. Address deals with the, with the identification of, uh, as a form of management and control. Interface with coupling users, coupling users to computers. Uh, and user uh, with the human and non-human agents that interact with computational machines. So let's take a closer to look to each of, of the layers. The first layer is at the bottom is Earth. Uh, it is the point uh, which the planetary perk of the Earth, Earth itself is subsumed to the, into the geographic frame of the stack, says Bratton. It is the substrate uh, from which the power necessary to operate all the layers is drawn and from where the metals and minerals that comprise uh, platforms electronic are extracted, as in the image of the brine pools uh, and processes areas of, of, 
lithium. It's, it's, this is a, a lithium plant in, in Atacama uh, Desert in, in northern Chile. The cloud is the second layer uh, from the bottom of the stack. It includes the computing and transmission hardware on which the stack uh, software depends, such as transmission cables, geosynchronous satellites, wireless network technologies, and of course, uh, data centers, as the one in the image. Uh, is one of the largest data, cent data centers in the world, uh, 3.5 million square feet. Um, it also includes, like, of course, cloud platforms, Google, Amazon. Um, the third layer uh, from the bottom of the stack is the city layer. Uh, sorry for, for the image. This is not very, very descriptive. <laughs> I, I didn't find a, a better one. Uh, um, and of course, address is the four is the four layer. Um, it's about the IP, IP version six, no, the most recent version of the Internet Protocol, uh, one of the main addressing systems and the communication protocols that provides an identification allocation system for computers and networks and routes traffic across the Internet. Um, the interface is the fifth layer from the bottom of the stack. Uh, interface are the members through through which the stack uh, address and is addressed by users, interface as compressing to graphical and object forms, link or the links, users and addresses, entities up and down, columns. Uh, the, dominant, the, dominant, the dominant contemporary gen genre of interface, the graphical user interface. Uh, it's an, inter an interactive visual uh, diagram that, re that represents a visually co coherent or sometimes not coherent image of otherwise discontinuous and opaque processes and flows. Uh, well, it, the interface can get mad, as you can see. Um, and then the, the user is, is the top layer of, of the stack. No? Um, this layer situates how users, human, animal, machine, view the stack and, and in initiate chains of, of interactions up and down the layers. No? from interface to earth and back again. Um, I mean, uh, again, quoting uh, uh, Bratton, the user subject is a position that can be occupied by anything, uh, pluralities, multitudes, um, composite, capable of, of initiating a column through, through the stack. No? So, so the stack is, is, a, is, is a model of, for thinking about the, about the technical arrangement of, of planetary computation as a coherent totality. Uh, as well as a, as a conceptual model for thinking the, the contradictory and complex spaces that have been produced in his image. No? And again, as, as, as Bratton says, uh, the stack is the composite axiom that may define or, or, or already define the course of geopolitics, geopolitics to come. No? As a global platform, it demands for universal, universal, universality and totality its demands for universality and totality should be read in both utopian and dystopian registers equally. The stack, quoting Brett Bratton, may represent an epochal enclosure of the planet under an absolute, absolutist regime of algorithmic capital, or the fragility of its totality may force new breaks and its infrastructure, infrastructural universality spawn new, even emancipatory programs on disenchantment, discovery, and design. And, and, and Bratton itself, he, he's a sociologist from Los Angeles, uh, and the, fa uh, the fact that I find extraordinary for the conversation is that he's now, the, he's for the last years, he's the director of, of an architectural program in the Strelka Institute in Moscow. Um, the program employs tools and approaches from a wide variety of disciplines, and is aimed at young international and Russian, especially from a variety of professional backgrounds, with a strong interest in working on urban-related projects. So from a geopolitical uh, and historical perspective, this is an amazing story. No? Uh, if I started my lecture uh, showing the marvel of the Soviet the Sputnik and how it, it, it catalyzed a set of network technologies, technological achievement, achievements in the United States, 60 years after the Sputnik, uh, we have a guy from California who is directing an experimental school of architecture in Moscow and teaching its uh, vision of the world to the future uh, Russian, Russian architects. No? Uh, and, and this picture is iconic to illustrate my, my remark. Uh, it is the, the Uber CEO, Travis Kalanick, 
giving a talk to Estrelka architecture students uh, last year. So, so yeah, 60 years after the Sputnik, it portrays the almost total hegemony of Silicon Valley and Californian ideology across geographies. And as, uh, and as all of you here know very well, the power of this kind of stacks is nowadays, as Uber, is nowadays considered uh, by many as a crucial problem in the, se in the sense of being tax avoiding, job killing, and even soul, soul sucking machine. And this, the stacks dealing with, with real estate uh, can evict you from your, or, or, or can dramatically change the use of, of, a part of urban fabric. Um, this is the case of, 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 of Airbnb. This, this is just this is a, a guy who made the visualization of the of the growing of, of Airbnb flats in in Barcelona. Um, of course, the, the military stacks can can kill you based on metadata. Well, maybe they will not kill any of of us here in this room. But if you are an Afghan or Yemeni or Pakistani family, uh, you can get killed while having breakfast. Um, what this, this one fence, fancy stack about jog jogging, uh, sharing the data online can be used to, to point overseas facilities such as uh, military bases and so on. So, so entering, entering, I don't know how much, uh, entering now in the second part of my, of my talk uh, about like bottom up uh, grassroots cartography. Uh, I, I want to share uh, some experiences about how a collective of, of, of activists, artists, hackers are, uh, have been using uh, map making no? as a, in development of a socially sustainable society. It's, it's a wide phenomenon that, uh, that has received many names uh, across your country cartography, neo geography, critical cartography, sitting cartography. Uh, I, I like the most the way of naming of radical cartography defined as the practice of map-making map that sub subverts conventional notions in order to uh, actively promote social change. Um, it's a book that was written a few years ago on uh, radical cartography. So some of the, some of the, of the radical map-making have addressed uh, the challenge to visualize uh, power relations, contemporary political, social, and economical system as the extraordinary work done by our colleagues of Bureau d'Etudes. Um, their visual analysis of transnational capitalism is based on extensive research, revealing what normally remains invisible and contextualizing apparently separate elements within a bigger whole. The Argentinian couple, Iconoclasistas, is another well known cartographic group uh, who have produced a vast repository about, about maps as ways, as ways of resistance, mainly in South America and beyond as this, uh, this, one, this map about the soya bean plantation in the Pampa region. Uh, the the so-called new social uh, cartography of, of Amazonia, of the rainforest in Brazil, is a project which, uh, uh, that teach indigenous tribe in order to, to use GPS, GPS technology to delimit its own territory. Uh, it's part of a participatory process to delimit the space of, of, of indigenous peoples. Uh, in, in a similar way, this, 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 this is a beautiful map of, of SAT, the, so, the zone to defend, uh, zone a defender in, um, in, in France, now that, that where for many years local communities and activists have been struggling against the destruction of their land, ways of living, because of the construction of, a, of, an, of the second airport in, in Nantes. This is a very recent map. As you know, uh, I think two, two weeks ago, the, the camp I mean, the SAD was, was evicted by, by the Macron's uh, police. Uh, in, in our case, as, as Hakitectura, uh, we use uh, intensively radical cartography back, back in the last decade, where we were based in southern Spain. And this, is a, this was our first map about the city of Seville. And on the eve of, of a very large uh, European Union summit and protest in 2002, uh, we did this collaborative mapping project with different community organizations. And this, early, this kind of early mapping projects resemble street maps. I thought our goal uh, was to chart the diversity of protest actions and events that were going to happen in this uh, anti-globalization uh, protest. And, mm, 
Yeah, individual groups could, could plot their, ax, their, their different actions uh, on the map, and the map was used to, to, to coordinate uh, protests across, across that, that period. Uh, later on, we engaged in a, in a more ambitious uh, cartography project about, about the geopolitical territory of the Straits of, of Gibraltar back in the times, and already it, uh, um, it, it still is a kind of hot spot in the context of, of the, at that time, the USA war on terror, uh, after the bombings of Madrid in 2004, and, and mainly when, when the European Union was heavily committed to build uh, Fortress Europe. So one of one of our questions uh, as radical cartographers uh, was, uh, what does neoliberal globalization look like in this geopolitical territory at the beginning of the 21st century? So we did we did this uh, this critical cartography uh, of the Straits, um, creating a kind of alternative understanding of the Spanish Spanish Morocco border region, where the border uh, is not an abstract line, but an increasingly complicated context, context space, no? and where the border be becomes, becomes the center. So the, the inverse, the, we invert uh, north and south no? um, to show like kind of the, the, the Spain and North America as, as a single geopolitical region and also to, to, to engage in a conversation with the, with the, with the viewer. So and our idea was to produce a, a counter-hegemonic and rebel visual aesthetics uh, to turn the map into a magnetic artwork. And our theoretical approach uh, was mainly based on Negrian Hart, uh, political philosophy described in Empire and Multitude. And as we were working with Naomi Klein, uh, her ideas in, in No Logo and, and others, so the, the A side of the map uh, was outlining Empire. Uh, so we map uh, north-south economic flows, free trade zones, zones uh, a new, what was known at that time that was detention centers, like pr pr prisons for, for migrants. Uh, so and our, way, our aim was to visualize uh, an ongoing low-intensity war against migrants and refugees, mainly against sub-Saharan uh, refugees. No? But also the straight as a, context, as a contested space where another world or another border is possible. Um, and and the, the B side of the map, it was a printed map like this size. Um, we printed like 20,000 copies. Um, was, was the most challenging one. The idea was to map the multitude. Uh, and if you like those, mm, this neg Negrian, Negrian kind of word, no? the, the counter hegemonic actions and groups opposing uh, this border regime. No? Um, so, to visualize recent struggles and our emerging rhizomatic activist network. So, we use the map as a, a strategic tool. So, uh, the contest uh, uh, were about the contest related to the multitude, to the activism. Uh, were about the past, the present, and the future. So the map included events that have taken place in recent periods, but also events uh, to happen in the, in the months and years to come. So the later turned the map into a pol an activist political agenda. Uh, so the result was not a static map, but a map for action, a performative tool that will enha enhance connections among activist groups uh, at that time across Andalusia and North Morocco. And we use the, met the metaphor of, of, of a social algorithm, um, a kind of lively diagram with li lines emerging from face-to-face -face encounter and entanglements. No? And as you can see here, I think many of you have recognized we use the kind of grammar of pure data. It was a software that we were using at that time. No, it's about like linking up and then, but it's really like kind of techie, techie geek thing, no? but well, our idea was ho hopefully look like a kind of social algorithm operating in the border with a more rebellious agenda. No? So uh, su surprisingly, the map worked out very well, and it helped to expand and strengthen those connections in between north, south, and also in, in between groups in, in Andalusia. Um, let's say uh, it has a kind of contagious effect. No? And the map helped help to synchronize minds and bodies Solidarity and intelligence, spaces and action. 
And this is the map, the map most uh, significant contribution. We, we, we outline a possible future which the map itself contributes to turn it into reality. Because as we know, maps are not just representation of reality, but they produce reality itself. Um, so uh, how much time do I have? Uh, 10 minutes. OK. So now take, taking, taking now the, the conversation of radical cartography uh, from, let's say, early, from uh, the previous decade, uh, and a kind of techne that, as you, as you, as you saw, we, we were doing kind of maps in, in PDF and printing it. So what is happening right now, no? uh, what is happening in this epoch of more of with a contemporary techne, no? um, and thinking about about uh, network infrastructure. No? So I, I would like to begin with this uh, at about like radical cartography more in a kind of planetary scale computation epoch with this this uh, map of of uh, of is is the Giffy net map. Uh, Giffy is, it, it will it will look uh, it's like a uh, Catalan way of saying Wi-Fi <laughs> or something like that. <laughs> Uh, and GIFINET is the, is the world's largest uh, citizen-based communication network with almost 35,000 nodes. Uh, it started in Catalonia, but now it's, it has spread all, all around. And it's a kind of a, a alliance of, of, of wireless, like of hackers, like also lawyers, people in the university, uh, and also like kind of uh, uh, little companies and that they were uh, uh, in, in some places in, in, Catalu in Catalonia where internet was not working very well if you wanted to have a, a um, commercial provider. No? So it started like I think more than 10 years ago, ago and now is this amazing kind of map and they have an, an amazing kind of mapping technology in order when you want to add a new node to the network so they use topography and it's, it's a kind of super high tech kind of mapping online tool. Um, and I want to continue with, with cyber cartographies as this one about, about the spreading of, uh, on the Spanish territory of the so-called 15F movement. Uh, it was the anti-austerity anti movement, originally uh, uh, also referred as the Indignados, um, that began with demonstrations in, in May uh, 2011, inspired by the re Egyptian revolution and the occupation of Tahrir Square. And later on, it inspired the Occupy movement. No? So this, this 3D cyber cartography is a visual representation of, of half a million of tweets exchanged between users involved in, in, the, in the movement. It was done by a biocomputing lab of, in one university in Spain. Uh, and the map is in some kind of high-tech way uh, to tell the story of the turmoil those weeks uh, in Spain. No? Um, uh, where almost all public squares in, in all cities across the country were occupied by, by a wide range of, of citizen in, initiatives. No? Uh, so coming back to, the, to a more kind of old school art of cartography, this is a very beautiful map of the, 15, of the camp installed in Puerta del Sol in Madrid that lasts for almost two months. And almost like seven million people participating in, in this movement um, because of that, uh, you know, we, we couldn't change the government in Spain, but now like major cities like Madrid, Barcelona, Cadiz, Coruña are governed by, by coalitions led by activists. Um, so in, in, in the context of this uh, 15th of May movement, uh, maps were intensively uh, used to visualize discontent, like, like political parties corruption, cuts in public services, uh, the, the diaspora of, of young people uh, who does not have un unemployment, but also maps were used uh, in an extraordinary way to organize all kind of protests, uh, protests and solidarity actions. So maps were used as performance you know, to synchronize uh, collective uh, actions, mm, like trying to uh, surround the, the, the parliament building and so on. Uh, this was uh, an initiative called Tokia Bankia, which means Bankia was this kind of bank that before it was public, then it, uh, it was sold, and then it was public again. So at the end, the uh, Spanish citizen lost, um, I don't know how many, how many 
thousands of millions of, of euros through the process. And this, this Toke, Toke Bankia initiative, uh, what the idea was to use kind of a user-friendly uh, uh, application and, and website for anonymous people to, uh, to make swarming actions to try to block the, the bank agency, to try to block your closer bank agency. So that was the idea. How, I mean, the hacktivists that they, they were at the core of the 15th of May movement, they were trying to develop these kind of tools for anonymous people to be very easily, very user friendly. Okay, let's, 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 where, where, uh, where is your closer bank, bank, bank agency? No? And it worked, it worked quite well. I mean, two, two banks uh, were, were closed, I mean, for a few with these kind of actions. And it, it, it was a kind of experimental kind of approach to radical, carto to radical cartography, in, in my opinion. Uh, and then, with the same idea, uh, there was this collaboration in between hacktivists. Indeed, it's called hacktivist.org. There is this, mo this hacker movement in Spain that is very, very well connected to the social movements. So they collaborated with the, with the PA. It's called the Anti-Mortgage Platform. Uh, to develop a digital tool called Stop Evictions, that the idea was to alert and organize, uh, again, swarming actions of, anony of anonymous people uh, to join efforts with the families that were going to be evicted. Basically, if, if the police has to go, go to, your, to your house that is, uh, uh, at what time, and if there is 50 people there, and the, the police cannot evict, evict you so easily. No? So the idea was to make this kind of user-friendly uh, application that was based on a map in order to encourage solidarity acts. And basically, it was a kind of map where you, receive, you register and, and you were saying, I want to be uh, uh, warned if there is an eviction in, the, in this ra radio of, of three kilometers from my house, for example. And then you will get the metadata of, of the eviction attempt. And it was, they were also like an including like the family, what the members of the family, the bank, everything. No? It was extremely sophisticated kind of project, this stop eviction. It was using Ushahidi, that was this free software uh, mapping tool developed uh, originally in Kenya uh, back in 2005. Um, so, so if we think about planetary scale computation, maybe the idea of planetary is a kind of tricky, because, uh, for example, about, about Uber, 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 Uber money is going from users and drivers to a specific situated bank accounts. Uh, or in the case of, of a stop eviction platform, the idea of computation totally relates to a situated and not a situated and not a planetary intervention. This is a here and now in this specific place for these specific people. Um, well, and this is the kind of ongoing uh, research I'm doing about what was the techne, kind of the, the new tools that they were being uh, performed, like kind of uh, network, topo network topologies real-time alert system, also the, the movement made a kind of memory of, of, of itself through, through semantic wiki. Um, so now, now going to the heart of planetary scale computation companies, um, the Bay Area, no? that is the headquarters of, of those platform capitalists, uh, Facebook, uh, Airbnb, Twitter, so there, as in many cities all around the world, people are suffering skyrocketing rents, exponentially growing income inequality, neighborhoods quickly become more expensive as a long-time residents are pushed out so that real estate speculators can create housing for people with more affluence. Long-time businesses are evaporated overnight, only to be replaced by the newest coffee shop or a tech startup. Public spaces are disintegrating, disintegrating as private shuttles crowd our public bus stops and streets, and as play, public playgrounds be, became increasingly privatized through app-based app reservation system. So in this context, uh, the anti eviction mapping project has emerged as a citizen grassroots initiative response. It's a data visualization, data analysis, and a storytelling collective documenting the dispossession of San Francisco Bay Area residents upon gentrification landscapes. And the main core of, of the main core team is those young people that you can see in the picture. Um, maintaining anti-racist and feminist analysis as well as decolonial methodology, the project creates tools and disseminates that data 
that contributes to collective resistance and movement building through digital maps or 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 oral history work, film, um, community events. The project renders connection between the nodes and effects of new entanglements of global capital, real estate, high tech, and political economy. This is, they, they do many maps. Uh, this map is showing the no, 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 no fault evictions in San Francisco uh, in the last, I think, 30 years almost. Or this one that is pointing out eviction near uh, the tech bus. The tech bus is this bus that is taking the people the, who works for Facebook, they live in the center and they have a spe special bus to go to, go to San, San Jose or, or the Facebook headquarters. Uh, and the project uh, studies the displacement of people but also of complex social worlds as certain spaces uh, becomes uh, desirable to such entanglements. No? And there is a specific part in the project about narratives of displacement. It's called Narratives of Displacement, Oral History Projects, that aims to document the changes in San Francisco by foregrounding the stories of people who have been, or who are being, or who were being displaced. And now I, I, I'm quoting them. By collecting oral histories, the project creates a living archive of people and places, documenting deep and detailed neighborhood and personal history, uh, histories. In, those, in, do, in, do, in doing so, the project creates a counter-narrative to more dominant archives that rely detail and attention to legacy, culture, and loss in the city. Uh, this project is combining a kind of a, a really, again, kind of high-tech approach to that data analysis, plus storytelling using a lot of video. And they say, while we are interested in the stories of, of this dispossession, we are not interested in reducing people to their evictions, and, do, and thus instead uh, focus on the intimacies of personal relationships to shift in especially as process, processes of gentrification um, unevenly unfold. We, we recognize that, this, that displacement transpire in kale kaleidoscopic forms, and that loss is corporeal, cultural, haunting, and real. So I think the project is super geek, at what, but also is like super, let's say, uh, what do you say, like it's like video storytelling. Uh -huh. From, from really from the streets. Uh, and, and for me, this, this anti-vision mapping project is probably one of the state-of-the-art uh, radical cartography projects in, in this age of contested planetary scale computation. Uh, so, so that was the, the overview I wanted to share with you tonight. Uh, I'm sure the next three days are gonna be an exciting social algorithm uh, by itself generating like many cartography project processes. So I'm, I'm looking forward to, to listen to your questions and comments now. And if there is someone here uh, who wants to join me for some writing uh, on, on radical cartography, those, those are my, my contacts. So thank you very much for your attention. So um, th thank you, thank you, Pablo, a lot for the for the good talk. Uh, if there are some questions, I'll be help you, happy to give you. Oh, Patrice, yeah. Is a uh, question, please. Is a question. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's, <laughs> not, it, it, no, it's not only an easy question; it's a humorous question, <laughs> but it's still a symbolic question. Uh -huh. Why did you use the symbol of anonymous to represent a user? <laughs> Uh, well, uh, as, 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 you saw, as you saw in the, in the, in the city light layer, it's not easy to find. I mean, what, what, is, the, what is the city symbol to include in the, in the stack? No, I was, I was just thinking about my own repertoire, about symbols for the city, and I was Google imaging, and, and I didn't find it. Uh, but about the user, for me, it was, very, it was easier, no? because uh, I think somehow, uh, not, not specifically the idea of anonymous, but as this group coming from 4chan. And, yeah, yeah. But the idea of anonymous as anonymous person, I think, is so important as a political character because of we are losing an anonymity, and and also because as as I, I show in those uh, 
uh, in those tools developed by, by the hacktivist movement in Spain, it's important now to create tools for anonymous people, people that they don't know each other, uh, they can collaborate for really uh, specific swarming actions. No? So it's not like about anonymous, it's about anon the anonymous uh, person as a, as a, that can turn in, into a political an activist just for a few minutes or hours and then you come back to your normal life. So yeah. What, would you have chosen, uh, chosen another image for a user? No, 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 it's, 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 it, it, it's all right. Uh, just what you were say, saying, they are anonymous to each other, and that's probably where the real big yeah, uh, problem or drama lies. They are anonymous to each other, but they are all known to the powers that be. Yeah. May I add one? Uh, <laughs> No, I, did, I didn't just take this away from you so you don't talk. I, I wanted actually to. <laughs> uh, it's called a participatory practice. Uh, uh, this is a new word in your language, right? A participatory. Uh, so, so, excuse me. Um, yeah, some of these things are, are new to me and I really uh, enjoyed it and it's sexy and uh, I understand, uh, just like I, I presume a majority of people here, uh, you know, the, you're talking of practices and of people that are our kind of people. Cool. Uh, you know, you know some of them personally, you root for them, uh, they're cool, they're doing good things. Are you looking as, a, as an analyst into uh, the other side? Because uh, the tools uh, that are used for social change for good are also the same tools are being used by you know alt right all the time. So, sorry, are you used by, by? by alt alt right? Ah, yeah, yeah. Uh, or or by any other uh, other organizational uh, 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 let's say half of the of the planet, mm -hmm. quite successfully, quite yeah. creatively, uh, uh, with you know ingenious uh, uh, innovate, innovation. And uh, you know that if you don't look that way, uh, your knowledge will not help your folks enough. So I'm just curious whether you know Ushahidi, yeah, all these grand examples. It's like the, the the good stuff. But are you looking into that other part of the field? Um, well, not mm, as if I have kind of political interest about that. Yes, uh, if I'm doing research. About that, no. Um, I think other other people is, is, is doing that. I, th I think the problem that you are you are you are kind of pointing out is crucial, and in somehow it's like kind of when Peter Sanders says that we are we have lost the internet. It's not, it's not only that we have lost the internet. Internet is also now also controlled by those kind of organizations and people. No, or or they are they are much more prominent than they were that they were ten years ago. That's definitely true, uh, um, but I don't, my, I don't know. I mean, I think we need a kind of collective uh, discussion about it. Uh, I don't know how much can I, I can help to in this kind of analyzing the enemy and in that sense. And no, I'm, I'm not an analyst about about those about that specific issue. No. Take this away. <laughs> Take this away. <laughs> And any other any other question? Um, you say you you told me before, uh, like we spoke a little bit about Breton before. About Breton. Yeah. Um, and you said like you are kind of like critical and and, but you you th I mean as you said before like his way of try his attempt of uh, describing what's the structure that we have around uh, is still much relevant. Um, what do you think? Do you think is there something missing there? Is it, or <laughs> what? What do you think is the uh, maybe weak point on it? Or in, in his analysis? Yes. Yeah. Well, I mean, from the beginning he said that this um, we are not going to talk about anonymity and, uh, and the loss of privacy. So, if he start with with that kind of uh, of remark, I think we have we are in a, in a really big problem. No? We, we, so we lost <laughs> somehow, no? Yeah, yeah. I think for, for me, I mean, his, uh, his contribution is very, is very, um, it's really good uh, to think about architecture. Uh, and I use it to, 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 for lectures to my, to my students in architecture. I think in other fields, if we talk about more about media, language, technology, things, it's not so 
I mean, his contribution is not so sharp. But I think for, for architecture, it's like if we, if, if we think about the um, showing this to, to architecture students, it's interesting because say, okay, you are, you are in the city. I mean, you are, you are trained to think about the city, but what, what happened about these other la layers, no? And in a way, it was that it has this capacity to, to make the architectural theory uh, updated. And I mean, more update to our to our technological world. If if this is if this is about if if, if the audience are is hackers, uh, I think it's, it's not he's not adding. Of course, to, yeah. I mean, it's, yeah. I think it's not so. I think we need a, a kind of a, a hypothesis that is much more really counter hegemonic. No, and, and yeah, that's and that's. I mean, I what I feel in that description is that's very like. Um, Abstract in a way. I mean, uh, he says city. I don't. I don't really understand it as a city, but it's like for me a so, so so abstract schematic that I can't really start much. That's why I would. I was asking for you. Uh, would you, you would you find a, a weak spot in it? Because I, I'm I'm looking for it somehow. I'm I'm like, uh, is it too too synthetic somehow? Uh, but a weak spot in, in what in, in his I don't know. Uh, it's uh, like there is this structure, and he says it's a structure. That's it. Uh, what we can do with it somehow? Uh, I, I don't know. So somehow, I mean, when we, um, uh, with those, with some colleagues, when we created the uh, architecture in 2001. We, we were dealing with these issues of what does it mean? I mean, man, do this, I mean, the space of flows as the context also for architects, no? Mm -hmm. And what does it mean that uh, you work with with uh, hardware, software, spaceware, and wetware, no? And I think at that at that at that level, I didn't I didn't I didn't find a kind of uh, any. I mean, his theory for me is not so. It's it's more a kind of for teaching. Pra practices and and also because I think it's, it's even if some people saying that it's not well written, I think it's it's kind of pedagogical, and it's very very uh, kind of uh, um, I think it's useful somehow. But um, I don't know if if in a meeting of of hacktivists, it's adding something that we need. Sure. Yeah. Okay. But um, yeah. But the, the, maybe the question is: Do we need a, another kind of cont another theory that could, in a way? Yeah, I mean, you you said it before. Probably, yes, yeah, you yeah. said it before. That's uh, that's uh, difficult to to represent somehow. That's impossible to represent the the the, the way uh, the the world is working somehow. Yeah, or, yeah, or, or, or even the, what what happened if 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 what Bratton does uh, does not do like. Uh, considering privacy as, as, a, as a crucial element of the stack, what happens if we cons if we really consider the problem of privacy and capital accumulation in those layers and how they interact all together? I think yeah, I mean I think we, you need a kind of I mean if you make a kind of Marxist critique, you can make a really strong critique to the, the stack. If you make also a feminist critique, if you make a kind of, yeah, I think we really need uh, other major theories, of course. Yeah, I mean maybe someone here can write. Can write it down. <laughs> <laughs> or okay. even it's written, but it's not. I mean, it's not in a MIT pre in MIT book or something. Uh, some other questions? Yeah. No, oh, come on. <laughs> Maybe it's just like a whole line. <laughs> uh, just uh, um, I wonder what you do with the maps. That, uh, oh, the purpose. Sorry. What what um, where do the maps that you create end up? Where? Where do the maps? Where do they go? The maps. Uh huh. The ones that we did, yes. Well, they went on the streets. They went on the walls of the, of, mm. of, in the in the bars. They went on the walls in the in the hacktivist places. Uh, uh, we are talking. Uh, who I didn't take it with me, but we are talking about uh, printed maps mm -hmm. that were used a kind of agitation, agit prop tools. Mm -hmm. yeah. For example, in, in the first we the first we did. Um, uh, sorry. <sighs> Uh, the, uh, it's important to say uh, that the, those maps, they were, um, let's say, before designing the map, there was some kind of meeting in a kind of, I mean, you can anti globalism how do you call it? Like, so the, so the social movements uh, at the beginning of the 2000s, no? 
that was about yeah, alter alter mundialization or whatever you want to uh, let's say uh, uh, it was the this uh, moment uh, this period of anti summits you no know? there was the the world trade organization the world bank or Uni U european union who was going to make a summit in your city you no know? where they were going to take decisions for example in 2002 in seville it was a very important summit of european union because they designed some policies relating to fortress europe Basically, Spain was going to develop a technology to control seaside. Italy was going to war with, with the aerial space. And we were going to make this agreement. And, and we are going to have this agreement with Libya, with, with Morocco. So they we will externalize the border. So those kind of uh, meetings were happening uh, with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. So the activists at that time, we were trying to break into the summit to collapse them. No? So it was important to know the spots and and so uh, and also that time it was a kind of uh, uh, nomadic activism that so people from other places of Europe and in Spain they were going to the summit for to protest so uh, in this map always there was a kind of uh, one side and the other side no? uh, well in this side we were we were making this again this kind of neoliber neoliberal visualization of, of Seville I mean uh, real estate operation speculation like but in the other in the other side we were mapping where where the ministry of where the the official they are going to meet in which hotel at what time so where is good to go a lot of people and to make a lot of noise and to break into the building so the map if you were a, a visitor to the summit you have practical information about where what can you do through uh, uh, along those days, but also uh, information about what is the problem. What, what are we talking about? We're talking about that in Seville, there was this, uh, this part of the city where uh, the, the soil w was sold to a bank uh, to make a kind of housing, but it was, a, uh, it was an area that there were, uh, there were floods, and, and you know, it, it was a, the way uh, uh, the maps, they were making a di diagnostics about uh, Capitalism, the way capitalism is, make, is, is accumulating capital, is evicting people from, so, is gentrificating some areas. No, so it was A side about that, and B side was about how can we in this space and time can we do uh, action together to try, basically to try the summit to be cancelled. <laughs> that was the idea, and it happened in Prague in, in year 2000. It happened in Prague. In Prague, it w uh, the summit was cancelled in the second day because of so many activists from all, of, all around Europe. They went there with rebel colors, and the summit was cancelled. And more or less, it was the same with this map. But this map became really complex because it wasn't just not about a city. It was it was more a kind of geopolitical territory. And yeah, and the idea of this map was also like to it was printed and. And it was used uh, as, as a kind of political tool, uh, as an agenda. Because, uh, I mean, you, you cannot see here, but uh, uh, for the people here who likes who use pure data, pure, pure data has a kind of the object with the bank. No, basically, there's a bank. You can bank. Uh, uh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, for example, uh, yeah, like uh, well, okay, uh, date. 2nd of April, uh, Malaga Social Forum uh, in the media Malaga. So basically, uh, date and the action was uh, date, date, of, date of, of action against detention centers. The 2nd of April was defined by in, in a kind of European activist agenda as the date of, date of action against detention center. In Malaga, here, there is a detention center. So we made a patch, like a pure data patch, on the top of the geography that's saying, uh, action against the tension center, 2nd of April, collectives, linking to the object, action. That was the idea. Or, or the Euro May Day, the, the, May, the May Day. That at that time, there was an attempt to organize in a European level the, the 1st of May. No? So uh, yeah, so that was the idea. So the, the, those groups they participated in the 
in the in the in the design of the of of the map and also we included connection that they they were i mean we thought that it could ha they could happen uh, i don't know if i explained it well but think about think about the map was folded and it was like also on the walls so it, and we we designed it in, as a kind of really beautiful aesthetic beautiful object huh? that people will so it happened. If you, if, you, if you were going around Andalusia uh, or even Morocco, if you were going to any activist place, like a squad center or the yeah, hagla, whatever, the map was all around the walls. And so did you it's about saying synchronization. And did you worry maybe uh, that uh, the, the flip side, I understand that the, the mapping made um, citizens, the anonymous, aware of possible action and the, possi you know, the problems. So connecting the anonymous, that was the intention, but possibly the side effect of the mapping is that uh, what Bruce Sterling calls the islands in the net, you know, these like blind spots become visible for the, okay. for the main. Mm. You know, you kind of plug them in, although the whole, whole idea about activism is that you try to kind of fly under the radar. So mapping has two sides. Well, I mean, sure, but uh, I think if you make these kind of maps, uh, uh, you don't want to have on the map anything that will compromise your activities. No? Yeah. And this issue about visibility uh, uh, and mapping is, is I, I was giving a, a lecture, more or less this, this kind of topic about this map in Brazil, in, in Rio de Janeiro. And, and there was an anthropologist there who uh, she became she became really upset with me because of saying, why are you publishing so many? Why, if, if this kind of method of giving so many information, this is like you are giving information to the, to the enemy or whatever, no? They have it already. Have it. Yeah, exactly, they, ha they have it, they exactly. But, but she, was, she was really upset and like really aggressive with me. And, I said, I said, uh, and, and then I remember that there is, uh, she's working with, uh, with a group, uh, they are anthropologists working with some social movements that it's supposed that they have produced many maps, but you cannot see. <laughs> they are not online. It's impossible to, to access them. Mm -hmm. So it, it was this kind of paradox. Maybe if you want to make maps like hiding so, so intensively your, your actions, then no one will, will, will access those, those maps. Mm -hmm. Indeed, this is my case. I really look into cartography. and. Uh, I really wanted to, to learn from those maps and from those experiences, and you cannot find them. <laughs> it's, they are so well hidden that you cannot find them. Yeah, but, 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 but now being more serious, I, I think this is, this is a, again a, politic, a really big political issue, but I think we are never giving, we are never giving like any kind of personal information or no. N nothing that, I mean, yeah. Uh, uh, thank you, uh, Pablo. One more, one more, one more. Uh, one more. Please. It's oh, we'll easy, easy, softball. Uh, when <laughs> yeah, you keep keep your, it short. <laughs> when you ask your first trick question, that's a gang. That's a this gang. This was okay. this was a trap. Uh, when I heard the evil evil question, I, I was exp I was give, making a bet with myself in my mind what is going to be the follow up, the kill. You know. Uh -huh. So she was very nice and kind, and this is the one I was expecting. Uh, <laughs> If I were an investor mm -hmm. and I would talk to you, you're an architect, you live with investors, right? You have to be mm -hmm. sensitive, well, I mean, you are supposed to. Uh, you have to be sensitive to that logic. And so let's imagine a situation. I'm an investor, for some reason I'm interested in progressive causes. Mm -hmm. I want to see this work. I want you, for instance, to actually genuinely block, to some extent, the, uh, the discussions going on in Seville. Fantastic, we have the same goal. How, do, how would you uh, persuade me that your method is successful? Uh, do you measure success? Uh, this is the way investors talk of the same shit. Like, okay, you're going to be drawing a nice yellow and black map, two colors, cheap print, mm. two sides, no problem. We're going to put it everywhere, but does it help anybody? Does it work? In which way does it work? What, what is different now that we have this map? Is mm. our action going to give results? This type of things I would like to ask you if I were an investor in your life. But, and then, what's the question? Uh, how do you measure what's your success? How do you know this works? Are, is, From a, are but, you, are but, you but I think you are, you are like using two kind of um, ways of talking, like kind of business culture and this kind of more 
I don't know if you're talking no, about four, like four foundation or, or, or activist nine foundation, like kind of this. No, this I, is an I, activist United utilitarian uh, uh, view. Like, okay, ooh, wow, we have a band together. You know, we have we are both activists. We want to disrupt something. Yeah. And you tell me, I'm gonna waste today, or you know, some resources. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a wonderful map. And I ask you, wait, yeah, but I'm the boss of our revolutionary yeah. cell. Uh, why, do we, uh, why are we doing the map instead of throwing Molotovs? Uh, you have to persuade me uh, that this is a good yeah. tool because it does make a difference. Does it make a difference? How do you sincerely look at that as an activist? I, 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 I don't know if, 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 if that's because I come from more a kind of poorer part of, of Europe. Or, but I, I have to say, I, I never face that, that conversation. <laughs> we will talk, you and I. Okay. <laughs> Well, Sorry, I'm uh, from California, <laughs> I'm not from Austria. Ah, thank, thank you, Pablo. Uh, thank, I, th I see that Vuk is getting ready for the, the talk of tomorrow, right? Uh, warming up. Ah, yeah, yeah the, the group there, yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, well, thank you. Thank you very much for the talk, uh, for the questions. Uh, we make five, really five minutes break uh, before the next uh, key, key, keynote from Fike Janssen. So please don't run away. Okay.